The event of introducing Samsung's first Ultra phone, the S20 Ultra, was amazing. 100 times zoom, a strong cooling system, best display, 108 megapixel camera, $1400, but in practice, let's be honest, it wasn't the best phone. It had overheating problems, bad focus, it was too big and the screen was very curved, and the back panel was glossy. The next events were again very focused on the specifications, although they were really good phones. But this year's unpacked event was fantastic for me, where Samsung showed us the performance of the device, instead of weird specs. It showed what this phone can really do. This is the S24 Ultra review, so let's do it all. The first feeling you get when you hold the S24 Ultra is oh, this is so good. The design has changed a lot compared to the previous generation. I don't mean that the camera frame becomes a star and shines on the back of the phone. The frame is flatter, now it is titanium instead of aluminum. Shout out to Apple, it's a good trend. The screen is completely flat, the S Pen has become more cubic, and the front glass has been changed to Gorilla Glass armor. The phone is more comfortable than before, both because of its non-sharp, flat frame and because the screen is not curved. Of course, I prefer a slightly curved display. The build quality is fantastic. The back panel glass is perfectly matte, the frame is also matte and the connection between the two is done perfectly. The front panel is now more anti-reflective than other normal phones, and this is completely felt. There are situations, such as under direct sunlight, that increases the brightness of the phone, and the problem is solved. But what about in front of the window, or the reflection of the reading light? This greatly affects the quality of the content, especially content with a black background, in real situations. This is not something that wants to increase its rank in display tests, but in reality it has a better experience. I hope that it will be a trend that we will see in other phones as well. In addition, it is really anti-scratch, also I don't suggest you try it, but it is scratched at level 7 with deeper grooves at level 8. It finally changed. The S Pen with all its functions is still inside the phone. The only difference with the previous generation is the design. Of course, the S Pen is almost perfect now. The display is great as always. Dynamic LTPO AMOLED tweaks with WQHD Plus resolution, 120Hz dynamic refresh rate up to 1Hz, which supports HDR10 Plus content. The quality of the display cannot be faulted. Excellent contrast and colors, deep blacks, especially with the new glass, and brightness of 2600 nits. Now it can no longer be called the brightest. But don't worry about it, because you won't have any problems under direct sunlight. Also because of the vision booster, the content is always sharp and clean. The ultrasonic fingerprint sensor is really fast and accurate and works even with wet hands. But it's really small. We have been hearing rumors for a long time that it is going to be bigger, but it didn't happen. S24 Ultra speakers are also great high volume, noticeable bass, and clear and detailed sound. The microphones have been quietly upgraded and can even be said to be at the level of the iPhone. It doesn't seem like a big change, but improving this small detail has a great impact on the overall experience. Also, the quality of your microphone in the voice message indirectly indicates the quality of your phone. Well, 99% are not geeks. The hardware has improved significantly, a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy, which is the same plus version with 12GB of LPDDR5X RAM and 256GB to 1TB of UFS 4.0 memory. Don't take it too seriously that the 8GB version is no longer available, it is $100 more expensive than last year, but its performance is extremely smooth. S24 Ultra flies inside the UI. The cooling system has become so large and good and this year's Qualcomm processor is so optimized that it does not feel too hot during long heavy use, and the performance is very stable. Maybe the difference with the gaming phone will be visible after 2 hours. The software is the most amazing part of this phone. 
Android 14 with One UI 6.1, and 7 years of software support. 7 years. That is, in this field, the iPhone no longer has a special advantage. The new One UI is full of customization features. You can personalize every little part you can think of. Also, there are many features, the UI is not confusing. Everything is neatly placed. In general, it is cleaner and smoother than before. But it doesn't end here. Google software, Samsung hardware. What do you think about this combination? It is fantastic. This happened with Galaxy AI. Galaxy AI is developed in collaboration with Google and has almost the same experience as Pixel phones. Using it, you can summarize texts, AI will answer unknown numbers instead of you, the text you type will be translated in real time in each app in the language you want. Of course, its performance is weaker than Google Translate. But it is useful. With circle to search instead of taking a screenshot, cropping it, and uploading it to Google Lens, you can search a part of the content with just a circle drawing. There are times when we see an attractive shoe or want to know the model of a phone. Using this feature in that situation is just satisfying. Google's editing capabilities can also be seen here. Even better than that, removing moving objects in the photo is awesome, but you shouldn't expect miracles. Correcting the photo angle with generative AI, book your photo after recording, a correction of the quality of old photos, attractive background effects, and many other features. But all these have two big problems. First, you have to buy a subscription to use them in 2025. And the second problem is obvious. These processes are not done inside the phone. So you shouldn't expect high speed. Of course, this is more noticeable in photo and video editing. The S24 Ultra battery is 5000 mAh, like the previous generations. But it performs better. In some heavy usage, it can easily last a full day, and you may even use it for a few hours the next day. There is no charger inside the box. But it still comes with the box. Uh, anyway. But you can get a 45W charger that charges the phone in 65 minutes. Its cameras and sensors are exactly like the previous generation. The difference is that the Prescope camera has decreased from 10 times to 5 times. But now it is 50 megapixels. Samsung says that it is actually better. We don't know, maybe. The shutter lag in the S24 Ultra is much less than the S23 Ultra. But they are still 12 megapixels in normal mode. You can take a 24 megapixel photo in the camera raw app, but not in the main app. Photos in daylight have a high dynamic range, excellent sharpness, and a slightly cold white balance. The detail of the photos is also great, but when you zoom in on small details like leaves, you can feel the lower resolution compared to the iPhone. In most situations, the photo is perfect, but sometimes the subject may be too bright or too dark in the shadows, but not always. In night photos, the contrast and dynamic range are suitable, the details are clear, but the noise is still there. And if the light is very low, the color changes slightly, which is weaker than the 15 Pro. But it has improved. Portrait photos are great. Subject separation, background blur, and subject sharpness are excellent. Ultrawide photos have a wide viewing angle, low noise, and good dynamic range. And the colors are close to the main lens. But the important issue is zoom. Now between 1x and 10x zoom, you can get better quality. And the fact is that this type of lens arrangement is more practical. You have a 200 megapixel camera between 1x and 3x zoom, which has very good quality even with a cropped sensor. In 3x to 5x zoom, you can trust the colors and details of the telephoto lens. 5 to 10 times zoom using a 50 megapixel sensor have completely acceptable quality with colors close to other lenses. But the fact is that the S24 Ultra works a little weaker at 10 times zoom and more. You have less gimmick, but better performance. Now you can shoot 4K 120 frames per second slow motion video and 8K 30 frames per second. I don't think 8K makes much sense with the phone. But 4K slow motion videos are good. 
Both Prescope and Main sensors have OIS, and their performance is excellent. But not compared to the iPhone, the sensor shift is still superior, especially in action mode. Selfies are very close to the style of Google Pixels. Good face processing, good detail, and wide dynamic range. But the selfie videos are still a bit noisy and soften the small details. One of the most important points of the camera is Samsung's collaboration with Snapchat and Instagram to not reduce the quality of photos and videos on these platforms, which is a positive thing for many. But still, what you get on Instagram from the videos is 80% of the original quality. But in the photos, it's okay. Maybe someone who watched the Samsung events live was a little disappointed. Less zoom, higher price, flat screen, and some AI possibilities. Even the camera sensors didn't change. But the S24 Ultra, with the same Galaxy AI and attention to detail, is the most complete phone to date. But I normally do not suggest buying it. So why? Yes, it is a good choice if you want to have the best of the best. But the S24 Plus is $300 cheaper and only lacks Prescope and Espa. $300. You can also buy a flagship Bluetooth headphone. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, like it. And if you like my content, subscribe to my channel. Goodbye, see you next video.